What's up, everybody? Tim Anderson here, a.k.a. Renfield, the Bearded Dwarven Princess, and we are back for another Rings of Power rant slash discussion as we dive into this piece over at TheOneRing.net, written by a guest poster called Keeley, who claims that the Rings of Power is earning trust in the fandom. And I have to ask, in what world are you living, Keeley, when every single video that comes out from Amazon gets ratioed to hell and back, clearly showing that that's not the case? Uh, this is another one of those uh, individuals who got flown to Comic-Con, who got flown to London, and so on and so forth. And they're making these broad statements about how Rings of Power is building trust with the fan. No, you've been bribed. <laughs> That's, of course, my opinion. Uh, we're going to be diving into <clears throat> their piece in its entirety. So it's worth noting that um, they do have a disclaimer at the beginning here. Um, Rings of Power is earning trust in the fandom. It says, note, the following is an opinion piece written by volunteer staff member Kelly, also known as Keeley, from the YouTube series Happy Hobbit. Now, no disrespect to Keeley. Um, she creates some pretty awesome Lord of the Rings content. So I want to make sure that I put that out there first and foremost and say that um, this is not a hit piece on her. I think what she does is great. I think she's a great content creator. She seems like a genuinely awesome person. But I am going to dissect this piece a little bit, and some of what I'm going to talk about with this piece is going to be a little, might be considered harsh. It's just criticism. So first and foremost, she uh, admits that she was flown to, she went to London, she went to San Diego Comic-Con, she got to rub shoulders with all these people, um, and got to talk to the showrunners and everything else, and when that happens, I'm immediately going to cast into doubt everything that you have to say about this subject matter because you have been wined and dined and bribed. End of story. And I can say that because I too was an influencer, not in this space. I worked for many years as an influencer with my wife in the travel industry. I have been to some of the world's best hotels. I have been to some of the world's best restaurants. I have been to some of the most amazing places on the planet working as a travel blogger, travel writer, travel photographer, travel videographer, drone photographer, and beyond, as well as marketing and influencer. And I have done it. I've, I've, I've worked the gamut, and I know exactly how this works. You come in, you're wined and dined, and as a result, you're going to give glowing coverage of everything you see because you've, you've been lubed up. You've been lubed up. You The foreplay was cranked up to 11, and there is no way that you're going to be able to resist what comes next. So with all due respect, knowing that going into this helps you look at this with a grain of salt when you read this piece and understand that while there are some kernels of great information in here, a lot of what she's saying is just opinion, and it doesn't reflect the fact that we're seeing in the real world, which is that every time a video comes out, um, it gets rashed to death and back, and it just it's proof in you know in my eyes proof that Rings of Power is at the very least not being anticipated the fandom by the fandom. It's actually you know being nervously you know we're very anxious about it. We're not um, uh, yeah we're not we're not 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 not, 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 not. Here, okay. Um, so um, she talks about a little bit here how she was invited to participate in a live stream. Um, and then she got flown out to London and and then and, and, and went there um, with her sister in their web show, The Happy Hobbit, uh, which, again, really cool show, by the way. I really think it's awesome. And again, this is not disrespect to her. Go watch The Happy Hobbit. It's really awesome stuff. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, but th this is mm. – anyway. She also done this cool book called Middle Earth from Script Screen, Building the World of the the Hobbit, which she helped write with Daniel Falconer at Weta Workshop. Also really cool. Um, she talks about how they were taken on a field trip in Oxford University, blah, blah, blah. We've already talked about this previously in a in a previous episode. We talked about how these individuals were wined and dined, so on and so forth. They then talk about how the following day they were treated to footage and costumes. And she said she was not impressed with the footage she saw for while there was nothing wrong with it. There was no context. I had no way what had just happened before the scene we were shown, where in the story it fell, and in fact, where the story was at all. It looked and sounded lovely, but there was no beating heart. My own heart sank as I realized I was going to have to just accept that this show wasn't going to fulfill my expectations. Once the showrunners spoke, however, I was left with the juxtaposition of hearing from two people intensely passionate about Tolkien to the point that they opened every day of shooting with a Tolkien quote and discussion and the marketing that didn't convey that love and respect. 
And what I saw in London didn't raise my excitement level, but hearing from the Shroners and knowing that such a capable team is producing the series did leave me with a sense of cautious optimism. So first and foremost, I would not call the showrunners a capable team because they have yet to produce anything in the world of show business. They have no credits to their name. They are an untried and untrue, untried and untrue group. Now, of course, they do have um, passion. I think anybody who goes into adapting Tolkien has to have at least some bit of passion. It sounds interesting that they were starting off each day with a quote and discussion. But we've also seen some ridiculous statements coming out about how, you know, you've got your actors and actresses from the show coming out and claiming that they're going to be changing the face of, uh, oh man, of Hollywood with their diversity decisions and empowerment and all this other stuff. What's very interesting here is that she talks about how the clips that she was shown didn't inspire anything. It didn't inspire any hope from her because it looked pretty soulless. And that what changed her mind was the showrunners talking about how passionate they are about Tolkien. Well, I have to stop for a minute and say, hang on a minute, you, you, you literally weren't shown any footage, and what changed your mind wasn't the footage, it was two people who changed your mind by their discussion with you. So this, in my mind, is not indicative that we're going to get a good show, nor is it indicative of, as the quote at the beginning of the article says, tr it's earning trust in the fandom. What happened here was, you were met with a high level of charisma after you had been wined and dined, the foreplay being turned up to 11, and then you were met with charismatic individuals who are obviously very good at what they do because they were able to pitch their show to Amazon and 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 and, and manage to lead a billion-dollar enterprise with no previous experience. That's all well and good, but just because someone is charismatic and has a lot of passion for something doesn't translate into them actually creating a good show. Um, we still haven't heard anything about this. Now, she talks then about how when she was attending San Diego Comic-Con, um, she was invited to a luncheon with cast members uh, where they saw the first viewing of the trailer, which finally had some heart and showed a hint of the plot. She says, I am no Tolkien lore expert, but many in the room were. They could name things on screen that I couldn't, but nevertheless, I felt excited. Um, dun, 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 dun. Bunch of cool cast pictures here, by the way. Um, everything was, she says, everyone we met at the lunch was kind, down to earth, and passionate about Tolkien and storytelling. No one had an ego. Um, I had a chance to sit down with Patrick McKay, one of the showrunners, and um, who shared that they were given complete creative freedom. <laughs> no, they weren't. Remember, they don't have the rights to the Silmarillion, and they have um, overlords they have to um, answer to at the end of the day. And they've having to, been having to make backtrack statements about how we're not a political show, we promise. Um, they were definitely not given full creative freedom, based on what we've heard so far, in the sense that they... Um, the press re Actually, the press release that came out a couple days ago, because I covered it in yesterday's uh, Rings of Power article on how they ghosted Peter Jackson after he asked to see the scripts. The literal press release that they released to The Hollywood Reporter was, well, we, we, we have to keep our vision extremely separate from his vision, and we have to make sure that we don't do this, that, or the other, and we have to only work within these outlines because of legal reasons and blah, blah, blah. They don't have complete comparative freedom. They have to, there's a balancing act um, here. Um, uh, this part of the article, I would love some confirmation on these things, because if these are true, it does shed some interesting light on a few of the um, things that many people have been asking about. It says Amazon never approached the Tolkien estate. It says Tolkien, the Tolkien estate approached both Amazon and Netflix, asking them if they would be interested in Amazon was. It said Christopher Tolkien was in charge of the estate at the time the deal was made. He passed away three years later in 2020 after production had already begun, and the directorship was passed on to his son, Simon Tolkien. Now, this contradicts with some things that I've heard, which says that Simon Tolkien is not the actual director of the Tolkien estate. Again, I would love some confirmation on this, because I've heard other things. Um, she goes on to say, that, which we already knew, I've covered this before, Simon Tolkien... Um, who has a love of cinematic storytelling is the current director of the state. It doesn't matter if he has a love of cinematic storytelling if he doesn't have any talent. 
um, which untrue, untried, untrue team here. Um, is he the current director of the estate? I would love proof of that. Would you be interested? It says, for context, no other production has ever given the Tolkien estate a seat at the table. That's because Christopher Tolkien was hard-nosed about any production being faithful to the books and him believing that it was impossible to fully show these things in a cinematic light because of the difficulties in translating that over and making an adaptation. Um, so I'd love confirmation of those things. Um, I've also never heard that Amazon was the one who approached them. Anyway, anybody have confirmation of this? I'd love to see confirmation of this. And by the way, by confirmation, I don't mean just drop a comment and down below. I mean, like, provide me with some links and some actual news articles and something that provides actual proof of these things, please. Um, if the plotline smelled like it was getting into some own territory, the state didn't permit it in the script. The production was then pushed in a difficult situation having to originate their own material. Um, scrolling down here. Uh, dun -dun -dun -dun. Oh, wow. She says she never would have read Tolkien if not for Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings film. Oh, wow. So, see, that's... This does say... This is one thing I will say, and I've mentioned this before. If there's one thing the Rings of Power has going for it is that it will bring more people to Tolkien, and that's never a bad thing. As she herself says, she never would have read the books had it not been for the Peter Jackson films, and that's not a bad thing. But it also makes me chuckle a little bit about... You know, this is where we also see people get hyped up around an adaptation, which has nothing to do with the source material. Um, in and of itself, it's not a bad thing, but it can lead people to not necessarily understanding the reality of the source material if they believe marketing materials above source material, if that um, makes sense. Uh, no artist considers art finished. There's always room to expand and change as the artist grows and ages as a person. Tolkien himself is a revisionist to the point that his heirs... This is the excuse that I see. His Middle Earth writings were often contradicted, uh, often contradicted themselves. Importantly, he intentionally left bits open to interpretation. That's people's interpretation of things, not necessarily truth. It is what it is. Um, anyway. We get down to the end of this, and as I went through this, and again, Happy Hobbit has some really cool stuff. You should check it out. Um, uh, no disrespect meant, I'm just, the thing I wanted to point out about this article is the claim that the Rings of Power is earning trust in the fandom. And as we clearly saw throughout her article, she herself says that she hasn't seen anything from the footage that gives her hope. It's the charisma of the actors and the charisma of the showrunners and the charisma of everyone involved um that's what's winning her over as opposed to anything that's actually related to footage or storyline which to me does not suggest at all that the rings of power is earning trust in the fandom it means that one person who was wined and dined in london wined and dined at the san diego comic-con given press access as she calls it um, met a bunch of the actors, met the showrunners, and, and, and got to be an influencer and feel like a VIP and in, a, in, a, in this unique scenario. Um, that has convinced her that the show that's coming is worth being excited about, and that's earning her trust. But I would hesitate to say that she represents the fandom. Because the fandom is not being wined and dined. The fandom is being told they're toxic. The fandom is being told that, that Tolkien was a racist, that Tolkien was against LGBTQ+. They're being told that Tolkien didn't want black people. They're being told all these things. They're being told that the Rings of Power is going to save the world from racism and diversity and all this other stuff. Um, mixed messaging going on. Love to hear your thoughts below. Talk to you next time. Like, subscribe, follow.